Hello and welcome to our Sunday worship service here at Hope Church. We're happy to have you worshiping with us. As you know, today is Mother's Day. Blessings and God's favor on all the moms out there. Let's stand together. The call to worship from Psalm 30. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen. Let's confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
34, 17 to 18. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for being a God who loves us so much that you are willing to walk next to us through all things. Whether we know it or not, you are here, listening to every heart prayer and encouraging us to persevere and seek your face in the midst of struggle. Not only that, you also renew us daily, providing us with the strength that is needed to persevere. You are such an awesome God. And today, on Mother's Day, I lift up a specific prayer for the mothers around us. We are stretched further than we ever were before because of the current COVID-19 pandemic. We ask and pray for greater mercy. Come meet us in our day to day, no matter what we may be doing or where we may be. But more importantly, we ask that you stir our hearts to pray and to seek you deeper. Give us hearts that desire to stand in the gap and cry out for our children our husbands, our families, and all those around us. Build up an army of women willing to be activated, to live fully alive in your spirit. We thank you again for the hope you give us and the things that are eternal, and we love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello again. We're really glad to have you worshiping with us on this Mother's Day. Today we celebrate and bless all the mothers in our lives, which include spiritual moms, godmothers, and others who are moms to us in various ways. We are Hope Church, the house of prayer for everyone, located in Clarksville, Maryland. Here are a few announcements. Until further notice, all our church-wide events are happening online. This includes our weekly Wednesday night HOP, Hour of Prayer, from 8 to 9 p.m. It's an interactive prayer meeting using Zoom and live streamed on our website and our Facebook page. Join us for Connect. It's a time to fellowship and chat with one another 30 minutes before our Sunday worship service begins. We'll be using Zoom to connect virtually starting at 11.30 a.m. and ending about five minutes before the service begins. Meeting information has been sent via email. We also have ministry time immediately following today's service. Using Zoom, the pastors and elders are available to pray for you. Check your email or our church Facebook group for meeting information. We're continuing with Beholding Place 2.0. It's our weekly in-depth Bible study of Philippians by Pastor Q. We meet virtually using Zoom on Saturday mornings, 10 to 11.30 a.m. If you're interested in joining us, please email Pastor Q directly for the meeting information. Next Sunday, May 17, we will have communion together in our individual homes during our noon worship service. So please have bread and wine or juice prepared for your family before Sunday. Our month of May missions partner is Pastor Luca and Gon, serving in Chiang Rai, Thailand, working with the Aka Hill Tribe youth. You can find out more about them and their ministry on our website under missions. Now we'll continue to worship through giving. Please use the Venmo app on your electronic devices to give your offerings. Gracious God, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Father, we thank you that you're teaching us to be faithful in the midst of suffering and this pandemic that's still going on. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to continue to give offerings to you. Lord, may this money be used for your kingdom. Lord, we thank you, God, that the numbers of deaths and um, the statistics are going down in certain places as they're considering and 
thinking of opening back up. We pray, God, for your protection and your mercy over your people. We pray, God, for a continued faithfulness, Lord, of, from your people as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Before the sermon, we have a message from Veronica Cho, our Children's Ministry Director. Hi, Hope Kids and Jam friends, and happy Mother's Day. Especially during this pandemic, we appreciate all mothers out there, and we want to say thank you. Happy, happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers and to my mothers too. And for taking care of good care of the children. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and my mother and um make sure let's to be safe and be wealthy and take care of us. Happy Mother's Day and I hope Every every mom has a good Mother's Day, especially my mom. Um, happy Mother's Day. I hope all the mothers are safe. Um, bye. Bye. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, and have a restful Mother's Day. And don't be worried because, like, we're all here for you. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, everyone who is a mother, and especially my mother, and happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, we love you so much. What does the Bible tell us about moms? In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Did you know this is a commandment from God? In Exodus 20, 12, one of the commandments that God gave us says to honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. When you follow this commandment and show respect to your parents, you are also honoring the Lord, which will allow you to live a long and fulfilling life. But how do you honor your mom? Well, when you are responsible by cleaning up your toys, when you are caring towards your brothers and sisters and not fighting, and when you work hard at school, or simply being kind to others, these are all ways to honor your mom. Sometimes, even just by being your amazing self and loving your mom just for who she is, no matter what, is a way to honor her. Everything that your mom teaches you and tells you is to help you. The Lord wants us to always remember the teachings that we learn from our moms and carry that wisdom with us. So the next time your mom tells you, um, tells you something, let, make sure you listen. Or the next time she asks you to do something, honor her by doing it right away. Remember, follow directions first time given. Proverbs 31, 31 says, Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. This verse means that a mother who lives well and raises her children well should be celebrated and rewarded. So, how will you celebrate your mom today? How should she be rewarded? I'll give you a hint. Give her a big hug and pray for her. I want to leave you with this. As one is comforted by his mother, so I will comfort you. Your mom's love is so powerful that God uses it as a metaphor to describe his love for us. God loves you just the way that your mom loves you. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and the soon-to-be moms. I found this wonderful quote by one of our presidents, President Abraham Lincoln. He said, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. I was curious about why, about why he called his mother or angel mother, and then I found out that actually he had two mothers. His mom of birth passed away when he was nine years old. About a year later, his father remarried. Sarah Bush Lincoln became his mother, and she was so good to him. He began to adore her, and she has become his influence all of his life. He began to uh, 
call her as angel mother. I want to thank God for not only mothers, natural mothers, also those who have became mothers by their choice, by their love, and by their actions. This morning, I want to share with you God's word for Hope Church. But next few weeks, I believe God wants to speak to us about some of the new understanding of what the church ought to be and how we need to live out in that way, how we need to walk into the promised land. Today, God is highlighting and helping me to focus on the family. The title of today's message is Raise Up Arrows. Raise Up Arrows. You'll understand this title as the message goes on. The text is from Psalm 127, one of my favorite psalms. It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors. For he gives to his beloved, even in his sleep. Behold, children are a, a gift of the Lord. Food of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. First thing this passage says to us is, unless the Lord. Unless the Lord our God is the one who is guarding our city. It says, unless the Lord builds a house, they, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. And first of all, it says, unless the Lord, your God, our God is building the house. Unless we are building our lives upon His truth, upon the Lord God and His ways, His truth. Unless the Lord God Himself is working with us, building our homes and our houses. All our efforts to not guarantee or, or cert, make certain that things will go the way we desire. Unless the Lord bears a house. Then he says, unless the Lord guards the city. Unless the Lord is the one who is protecting us. All our efforts to protect ourselves does not guarantee. Does not secure uh, any real tr- safety. He says, one of our promises God gives to his beloved is Psalm 121. The Lord is your keeper. Lord is your shade on your right hand. Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and coming in. From this day forth and forever. Our Lord, our God. His promise to his children when he trusts in the Lord is that he will be our, he is our keeper. He will be our keeper. Is he Protecting your home. Is he protecting protecting your lives? He says, in vain we run on our own. In vain we build on our own. He says in verse 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors. For he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. Look at this phrase, painful labors. Many different translations. Some of it says, your anxious toil. Some of it says, your exhausting labor. I like what MSG says, work your worried bone, fingers to the bone. Oh, the bread of sorrows. You see, this phrase may, rem- reminds us that all our efforts to provide for ourselves does not guarantee. But for He, our Lord, our God gives. God so loved the world that he gave. Our God is God who loves to provide for his children. And then he says to his beloved, God gives to his beloved, beloved ones. He calls his children, his people, beloved ones. You see, home has to be a place, it needs to be a place in our Lord God. Where we live as beloved of God. This is where we experience and we live out the fact that we are loved 
by our God. In the secure place we live and we build a home, our lives. He says, for he gives his beloved even in his sleep. Literally Hebrew, the original language it says, to his beloved sleep. The phrase even in his is provided in NASB version to make sense, better sense out of this verse. The point here, God is, the word of God is saying that our God gives to his beloved ones even while they are sleeping. He gives sleep, the rest, as well as, as, well as while we are resting. He, our God, grants and provides for us as well. This is the promise of our God. This is what home is to be built upon. That we rely on trusting our God who grants us rest. Home is not only a place where we understand, live out His love for us. It is also a place we experience, trust in God as we learn to rest, find rest in our God. Jesus promised in Matthew 11 verse 28 through 30, amazing promises. Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am uh, gentle and, and humble of, in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Our Lord, our God says, come, I'll give you rest. You see, the home, the house, our Lord God helps us to build. It's a place where we know we are secure is in God's love for us. Where we always experience true rest because our God is God who provides for us. This is where place that God is helping us to build. The next portion of Psalm 127 speaks of children as we build the home house with the Lord our God. It speaks about children and what we are building in. In Psalm 127 verse 3 it says, Behold children are a gift of the Lord, from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. It says, God says, children are a gift from God and a reward from God. You see, as we build home, God is desiring that our homes to be a place where our next generation, our children grow up, understood, being understood, they were valuable, they were a gift from God. To the family, it was a gift from God. And not only the children are seen not as a burden, but a reward from our God. This is where the home is where our children are, will be growing, understanding their value. They are valuable before God. They are gift from God, sent from God to the parents. And the next verse, it goes on to say something very interesting. It says, verse 4 and 5, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. And God says right here, children are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. I, saw, I found this graphic in the Google search. I liked it. It says something very interesting. It was, Give, reminding me of something. God is speaking how, speaking was speaking to me how our homes, as God highlights in this season, the importance, the sickness of our homes becoming a place where our Lord, our God is building. It will be a place where God is raising up. We are raising up with God arrows, weapons. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Verse 5, this is where Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, his spiritual servant. He's a minister now and he's reminding him, as I think of your strong faith that was passed down through your family line. It began with your grandmother Lois, who passed it on to your mother, dear mother, dear mother Eunice. And it's clear that you too are following in the footsteps of their godly example. You see, a Paul speaks about Timothy, about how he had spiritual heritage in his house. 
His faith was a heritage that was passed down from generation to generation, from his grandmother to his mother, then to himself. There's a heritage, spiritual heritage that was passing down. A home is a place where there's a spiritual heritage that is being, a legacy that is being built upon. In verse 15 of chapter 3, on the same uh, book, the letter the Apostle Paul wrote, and that from childhood, you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He talks about how, he says how he was growing up, he grew up with the Holy Scriptures, sacred writings, and through his mom, his grandmother, and he learned the wisdom that leads to salvation through the faith in Christ Jesus. There's a spiritual upbringing at his home. And then talks about in the next two verses, amazing revelation about the scripture itself. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, every person of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. It speaks of how, this is how the Paul says, Timothy grew up with the word of God, strengthening him and preparing him for every good work God had laid before him. You see, Timothy, like every other children, they, are, they should be growing in our homes. They, they, he had spiritual heritage. Spiritual heritage. In New, Deuteronomy chapter 6, apo, uh, not Apostle Paul, but Moses gives the word to the Israelites on the way into the promised land. His final message, as they are ready to move into the promised land, he gives final encouragement. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it. Next verse, verse 2. So that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. O Israel, you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you. There's a blessing in obeying and following the word of God. In a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 4 speaks of amazing uh, truth that every child of God must, uh, must uh, follow. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Look what it says. Verse 6. These words which I co I'm commanding you today shall be in your heart. Moses speaks to the, the Israelites that this word, this command, that love the Lord your God should be in your heart first of all. You see, home is a place where our faith, our life in God is modeled. Spiritual modeling happens, should be happening in our homes. It is not just a place where we teach. Now we, our, we ourselves will be living out the faith and the love for our God. It will be modeling to our children. This has to be in our hearts first of all. Then he goes on to say, these words which I'm commanding you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and daughters, of course, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And Moses goes on reminding him, reminding them, diligently teach your sons and daughters. In any occasion, when you're sitting down, when you're standing up, when you walk, walking, when you lie down, when you get up, you're always teaching. 
NLT version says this way, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving to you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Repeat them over and over. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, when you are getting up, and home, outside, wherever, when you are getting up, to go and going back down to bed, you speak God's word. You teach them intentionally. In the MS version says, Write these commandments that you have given to you today in your hearts. Get them inside of you. And then get them inside your children. Put those words in you first of all. And then put them instill in them. Talk about them wherever you go. Sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from time you get up in the morning. To when you fall into bed at night. Every season, every time of the day. Speak intentionally. Guide your sons and daughters in the way of the Lord. You have it in your heart. You live it out in your life. You model it. You intentionally teach it. You see, the home is where uh, spiritual instruction happens. Let me talk to you from my heart a little bit. You see, over the years, we have relegated spiritual education instruction to the church, local body of Christ, which they have role in it, which is good. But we have forgotten the main place of spiritual instruction, of modeling. Heritage comes and starts in our homes. You see, I believe God is one of the things God is teaching in our season, as you're locked in and as you are boxed into our homes, God is reminding us our spiritual life does not always based upon the local church gathering only, but it also starts first of all with our homes being a place where we love God, worship God, where we are modeling our faith living out our faith and our children growing up in that place with the spiritual heritage and instruction. And they'll go further than we ever went because they're already studying off from where we already learned from, started from. Now I still remember the story that uh, that moved me from the book Insanity of God by Nick Ripkin. Uh, the person in, in Russia, this name Dmitry. What happened was because of the Russian and the Communist Party, where it, it really uh, limited and persecuted Christians, and there was no church, so he began felt the need to teach his sons the Bible. So I've been some nights with his wife's uh, 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 agreement, begin to teach them, read them some Bible stories night after night and after a while the sons, they loved it. They asked, Daddy, can you do it more often? As you begin to tell them Bible stories that as you know and the neighbors be heard of it, they begin to come and join in to hear the Bible stories he was telling his sons. And that dad turned into a church. Later, it became grown up into where 7,500 people come to hear the Bible story. The father began to teach his sons. And later, he ended up going to jail for it. But here is his spiritual life. Education begins at home. God is reminding and strengthening our homes to be a place where our children are raised up as arrows, equipped for Every good work, adequate, strengthened. You see, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, God says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. It talks about instru instruction and discipline, but the phrase that really hit me was, bringing them up. Bring them up. It's talking about formation. You see, one of the words that we talk about is spiritual formation. 
a child growing and becoming a Christian, a child of God, live, becoming more like Christ, has to start from our homes. Spiritual formation of our children should happen in our homes. We cannot rely on other people all the time. We has to it has to start from our own homes. You see, God's ideal is when a family of God partner with God for the discipleship, discipling of the next generation. It is God is calling homes to be a place where we disciple next generation, starting with our own home, where we worship God, where we draw near to God. Our faith will be living out. The, the, the way we love God will be shared and modeled to our children. They'll grow in God's grace. Are we raising up arrows? Are we raising up arrows in our homes? God is reminding us at this time. How are we building our homes? What is God calling our homes to be? Our homes ought to be a place where we come and worship, where next generation begins to learn from the parents and from home what it means to love God, what it means to follow God, what it means to delight in God. This is where worship begins. True worship begins at home. True worship does not happen in the big gatherings. It starts from our homes where our children learn to worship, when our children learn to love God, when our children learn to walk in His ways. Built upon the Word of God and the wisdom that leads to salvation through the faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are we raising up arrows? It says, Psalm 127 verse 4 and 5, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. How blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with the enemies in the gate. Let me just think, amuse a little bit with you about arrows. Arrows are weapons. Not, not like just sword where you are fighting somebody near. Arrows are able to fly and go beyond where you are, even long distance. It, uh, uh, and it's, I, I think it speaks of where our God is saying, uh, God is saying, as He strengthens our race of our sons and daughters, loving God, and they become more and more followers of Jesus Christ, they will be, they will be able to go far further than we ever went. To the places where God will lead them to for God's glory. The enemies will shake. We will have confidence in our God. I remember, uh, this is the last story. I remember uh, when I was visiting, visiting uh, Lana last year in Thailand. I went to her office on the day I was leaving. I saw in her office, she had many arrows. She had quiver full of arrows all over the place because it was a prophetic word God has given her for the promised land. The children, the, the children that were rescued, that she is raising them up. And she was now not just rescuing those children, giving them a home. God called her, called her to raise them up as arrows in the hand of a warrior. Her dream and prayer because of the prophetic word was that these children will be raised up and they will be sent all over Asia and the Southeast Asia, all over the world as God's weapons of His grace and mercy. I really believe God is speaking to Hope Church saying that we are, we are raising up arrows in our midst. It starts from our homes. Where our homes are raising up arrows. Building the house that God wants us to build. God is building in our homes. As God has given children as gift to us, reward from His gracious hand, we are raising them up as arrows for the kingdom of God. It will go forth with the power and the great mercy of God. Are we raising up arrows in this season? Are we raising up sons and daughters of God? 
I want to encourage you to live out your faith. Love the Lord your God. Model your love and your life. Your children are see in you. They will be modeled after your own heart. They will be taught as you instruct them. They will be formed and shaped into the disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. They will receive the heritage of faith of mom and dad. And our homes will become house of God. Prayer for all the nations, all the peoples. Come, let us pray. Father, we do on you today, we look to you, the builder, the God, the provider of our lives. We come before you, God. Strengthen and build the homes with us, in us, God. Your kingdom will come, your name be lifted up. Our children will grow in heritage, grow in becoming more and more like you, as your sons and daughters, loved by you, God. So ask, make our homes, Grow our homes into house of prayer for all the peoples. It will be a hope for the nations. Father, build our homes with us. Go with us, God. We love you. We honor you. We give you glory, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
receive God's blessing. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be upon all the people at hope, be upon every home at hope, be upon those who call upon the name of Jesus from now until forever and evermore. Amen.